Hello and welcome to FIA Pure Motorsport. On this week's episode, the world's best rally pilots conquer some of the world's biggest dunes. The E-Rally Monte Carlo electrifies us. We take a closer look at the new digital rally roadbook. And much, much more from the FIA World of Motorsports. The Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge is host to the penultimate round of the FIA World Cup for cross-country rallies. And this 30th anniversary edition will again push competitors to the limit as they power over some of the toughest and most dramatic terrains the world has to offer. Towering dunes in the famed Rub al Khali characterize the largest uninterrupted expanse of desert on the globe. The teams have five selective sections ahead of them with a total length of 1,357 kilometers, and the front runners will be looking to secure maximum points as the series heads towards a decisive phase. Stage one is over 260 kilometers long, heading south towards Khazar al Sarab. 80% of the day's action is off piste with some tricky drops. It's an epic day of cross-country rallying at its best, with the leading driver seemingly avoiding any thoughts of taking things easy, with four more demanding desert stages remaining. And nobody masters the challenges on the first day better than Nasser al Atiya. With his co-driver Mathieu Boimel, he gets off to a perfect start in search of his third triumph in the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge. al Atiya steers his Toyota Hilux safely to the fastest time by far. Poland's Jakob Przgonski and German co-driver Timo Gottschalk in a mini John Cooper Works buggy managed to stay close. They're just three minutes slower than the Toyota Gazoo Racing Team. Alatia's two closest World Cup challengers, Argentina's Lucio Alvarez and Saudi Arabia's Yazid Al Raji, both driving Toyota Hilux overdrives, are more than seven minutes off pace in third and fourth positions, respectively. It was excited, you know, and uh, we, we did a good job, you know, and uh, I think uh, it was an uh, amazing run and uh, we, we enjoy a lot in the sand dune, you know, because it's 100% of the sand dune and uh, yeah, uh, this is a fantastic uh, uh, feeling here in Abu Dhabi. Stage two is the longest stage of the rally at 318 kilometers. This special stage starts in Medinat Zayed and leads back to Hamim. Yazid al Raji tries to make up time, but it's not the best day for the Saudi Arabian. Instead of closing the gap to his rivals, he loses over 17 minutes on the leaders. Alvarez also struggles in the large dunes. The Argentinian loses time, but stays ahead of al Raji. Jakob Przgonski has another good day. Although he does a lot right, he can't keep up with Alatia and loses another three minutes on the leader. Alatia takes another step towards the World Cup crown and returns with a great feeling back to the headquarters, the magnificent Castle Kassar Al Sareb Desert Resort. Stage three is over 300 kilometers long. This special section has some very technical sections in the first half. From the start, Nasser al Atiyah enjoys another dominant day in the dunes. The World Cup leader flies to another stage victory, his third in as many days. Especially in the more technical parts, he shows his great ability to read the dunes. So no wonder that he extends his overall advantage to 11 minutes, 18 seconds. Lucio Alvarez has some problems in the technical parts, but ups the tempo afterwards. A good second place finish for him. For now, he focuses on securing a podium finish for this rally to improve his World Cup position. He is on course to take second place from Yazid Al Raji, who suffers a broken drive shaft and loses 45 minutes. Jakub Przgonski doesn't have a good day, never getting the right feeling for the stage. The Polish driver finishes the stage behind Alvarez and Al Atiyah, but remains second overall. The special section of stage four is 252 kilometers long and ends in Kusawira. It doesn't present as many dunes as the days before.
fastest on the stage for a fourth win in a row, Nasser al Atia and Mathieu Boimel stretched their overall advantage in their Toyota Hilux to an unexpected 23 minutes 48 seconds over Argentina's Lucio Alvarez and Spain's Armand Monleon. While second place Poland's Jakub Przgonski is hampered by mechanical problems and finishes the day in 23rd, Denis Krotov seizes his chance and takes with a third place finish, also third place in the overall standings. The stages was not bad, you know. Uh, it's a mix uh, between uh, fast sand, uh, crossing dunes, and uh, fast road, uh, yeah, it's uh, today it's a mix, you know, we, we enjoy a lot, you know, and uh, yes, it's uh, day four finish and uh, still we have uh, one more day and we'll see. The fifth and final stage of the 30th edition heads back north to Yas Marina. This 217 kilometer long stage starts in Asab and ends in Al Fatiha. Yazid Al-Raji has his best result of the week and finishes second on the stage and fourth overall. That means he has no more chance of winning the World Cup title. Denis Krotov should be very pleased with his performance. The Russian is driving the mini John Cooper Works buggy for the first time. And from stage to stage, he gets a better feeling for his car. His reward? A fifth place finish on the last stage and a place on the podium in the overall standings. Lucio Alvarez already had a good week and saves the best for last. The Argentinian wins the last stage and keeps the fight for the World Cup title alive. Nasser al Atiyah and his co-driver Mathieu Boimal play it smart on the last stage. Not risking too much, they finish in third position and al Atiyah wins his third Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge. Before the last event in Saudi Arabia, Nasser al Atiyah leads in the overall classification with 92 and a half points. Only Lucio Alvarez in second position has a chance to take the title away from him. Mathieu Boimel is one of the best cross-country rally co-drivers in the world. He became a serial winner alongside Nasser al Atiyah. One of the main tasks of the two-time Dakar rally winner is to provide his driver with information. For this, the co-pilot has his road book. The road book describes the route by kilometer points. It contains information about the terrain and impending dangers. And of course, it also shows the course of the route with important waypoints that the participants must cross in order to reach the finish without penalties. Almost a year ago, the paper roadbook was replaced by a tablet, the digital roadbook. So the new roadbook uh, is the digital roadbook. I will say that it's, uh, it's a good evolution for our uh, sports. The first thing is that uh, we don't have the, the information like before, the day before, and we, we cannot uh, work on the line or, or try to check uh, the, the, the difficulties of the next day, and we'll discover everything during the stage. So this is the main uh, difference compared to the paper book before. The information is only uploaded to the tablet shortly before the start of a stage. This way, all teams have the same conditions. In the past, large teams had navigation specialists, so-called map men, analyze the route of the following day in advance and in great detail. This was a decisive advantage that has now been eliminated. Now the teams get all the important details while racing at high speed through unknown terrain. In fact, uh, you will see two parts when you are navigating with the roadbook. The top is uh, only to, um, to have the, the control of the, of the navigation side. So it means uh, the direction, the speed, the control of the waypoint, the um, arrow with the, the cap, and uh, the most important, the distance. So it's also doing the odometer. And then the bottom part is the, is the road book like uh, before we had on the paper. So we have four different lines and uh, four different drawings that you can uh, anticipate a little bit what will, uh, arrive, what will happen in the, the few kilometers in front of you, but not more. So 
uh, during the stage, I need to, to analyze all this information and to try to give uh, Nasser as mm -hmm. fast as possible. The digital roadbook is operated with a remote control. The co-pilot also has to get used to this. I did not have any problem uh, during the, the last uh, one year with this uh, digital roadbook. Uh, it's clear, the drawings are nice, the visibility is, uh, is quite good. And uh, now that we, we work with the, this remote and this kind of device uh, for the last one year, I will say that uh, I'm very happy how it works. The 20th Rwanda Mountain Gorilla Rally is the fifth stop of the African Rally Championship, the Africa Motorsport premier event. Kenyan Carl Tundo leads in the overall standings with 90 points. Just 17 points behind is his closest rival, Guy Botaril from South Africa. In the event of another win by Tundo, Botaril will need to finish in the top four to keep his title hopes alive until the final round in his native South Africa. The Rwanda Mountain Gorilla Rally runs for two days with 12 competitive stages, covering a total distance of 195.4 kilometers, and 15 drivers from all over Africa are fighting for the win. Kenyan McRae Kimati and his co-driver Kioni Mwangi in their Fiesta Rally 3 are not in the top 10 in the African Rally Championship. Their best and only result in the points was in 8th place at the Rally Tanzania. But the Kenyans cope excellently with the conditions in Rwanda and achieve a great third place. Also from Kenya are Karan Patel and Tasif Khan in their Ford Fiesta R5. They already finished in second position at the Rally of Tanzania. During the two days in Rwanda, they are always close to first place, putting a lot of pressure on Carl Tondo and even managed to win three of the four special sections on day two. In the end, they land in second place, only 14.4 seconds behind. In his Volkswagen Polo GTI R5, Carl Tondo has dominated the previous three ARC events. After Guy Botteril has to retire at the end of the first day, the way to his first ARC title is clear for Tundo. He only has to finish the contest, but Tundo is aiming for his fourth win in a row and makes it to first place. So it's an all-Kenyan podium, and Carl Tundo and co-driver Tim Jessup win for the first time the Rwanda Mountain Gorilla Rally. Amazing time here. It's a great uh, rally. We The sections were... Awesome, they were very fast, but uh, and it was very close between first and second, so all in all, a good weekend. Carl Tundo now has 120 points and can no longer be caught up with by Guy Potteril. With his fifth place finish, Yasin Nasser takes over third place in the overall standings. The Formula Regional and F4 Championships have crowned their champions. In the Formula Regional European Championship, Grégoire Saucy won his first title. The Swiss laid the foundation for his success with eight wins in the first 14 races. Kiffin Simpson from the Cayman Islands won the Formula Regional Americas with seven race wins. With two wins in the last two races, he secured the title in a commanding manner. In the Formula 4 US Championship, it was much closer. Mexico's Noel Leon managed to win only two races in total, however, three second place finishes in the last three races secured him the title. Delano Fanthoff won the F4 Spanish Championship without much difficulty. The Dutchman could celebrate 10 victories in total in the end. Things went even better for Oliver Bierman in the Italian F4 Championship. With 11 wins, the Brit won the title by a wide margin ahead of Tim Tramnitz, a duel that also took place in the F4 German Championship. Only here, it was much closer. It was only in the last race of the season that the 16-year-old Bierman was able to clinch first place. Again, only second place remained for the German Tim Tramnitz. Christoph Holovchik and Lucas Cruzea in their mini JCW rally won the Baja Porto Alegre in Portugal, the ninth and final event in the FIA World Cup for cross-country Bajas. They thus secure overall victory in the FIA European Cup for cross-country Bajas. With a calculated drive to a 10th place finish in Portugal, Yazid Al-Raji in the Toyota Hilux Overdrive won the title in the FIA World Cup for cross-country Bajas. 
The 24th International ADMV Lausitz Rally was the last stop of the Central Rally Trophy and this year also the home of the European Rally Trophy Final. Eric Caiz showed a good performance and was 34 seconds ahead of the local hero Matthias Kela before the last special stage, but Caiz suffered a capital engine failure shortly before the end. This meant that Matthias Kela won the Lausitz Rally and Mustafa Kakel won the final of the European Rally Trophy. Despite his failure, Eric Caiz secured the victory in the overall classification of the FIA Central Rally Trophy. The FIA E-Rally Regularity Cup is an FIA cup for normal road production vehicles with an electric drivetrain. The winner is determined from the combination of consumption and regularity. The goal is to drive from A to B in a precisely defined time and at the same time pay attention to consumption. The target time is based on the distance from the start and the imposed average speed. For every tenth of a second the teams are over or below this time, they get one penalty point. There are not only heavy fines for exceeding the speed limit, but also for slowing down in an excessive way or stopping to catch the right time. For this reason, we monitoring every point, where is the car, where, what is the, his uh, speed, and uh, the marshal see exactly the situation. If the car go over this speed, they have a penalties. It's important for us to arrive exactly in the perfect time that this car has. This is a regularity style of drive. It must be very precise and uh, communicate with your navigator because you study the meters. All meter is very important. Uh, it's about the line on the road because uh, on the straight it's simply, but in the course, you can go with the three course, you can have, I don't know, 100 meters, 80 meters, and different line, it's 150 meters. So in a speed of 50, we, are go we, we go uh, about the 50 kilometers average. Uh, it is maybe different two seconds and you must be precise on the tenth of the second. So you must study the lines, study the meters, communicate with the navigator, study the time, and be afraid of uh, road and people, other cars, etc., etc. The rally takes place on public roads and it can happen that the teams lose a lot of time due to very slow road users in front of them, but the experienced teams know how to compensate for that. Many cars arrive exactly with zero penalty. Yes, uh, because they are professional crew. <laughs> yes, it's not easy, but uh, also many cars have other instrumentation inside of the car. GPS, computer, trip master, etc. And uh, they have a sensor, additional sensor in the wheels for to know exactly the, the, the advances of the car, for example. Yes. The time is not only taken at the end of the stage, but there is at least one secret timing point on each regularity stage. For me, uh, too successful is to be regular. Uh, because uh, if you, you take a penalty and the point, 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 point. The team with the fewest penalty points wins. But another factor also plays a very big role. 50% of the classification is the consumption of the car. It will be compared to the WLTP index. And we merge the two results for to have the final classification. This is very, very important because uh, the difference from the other eco air rally, normal air rally, is that uh, we needed a good driving with low consumption. This is very important because FIA want to trust the improvement for to uh, reducing the CO2 emission and for teach what is possible to have a good result with a good style of drive. These cars are absolutely standard car in the market. Is easy, is a friendly championship, is open for all peoples. 
a very good reason to join the E-Rally Regularity Cup, a series that is growing steadily. Over 50 participants this year in Monaco and Bilbao, a new event will be added next year, bringing the total to nine events and making the competition even more exciting. The fifth edition of the Monte Carlo E-Rally is a special one. More than 50 teams from eight different nationalities driving electric cars and one hydrogen by 12 major brands take on a challenging course. The teams have to master more than 350 kilometers in stage time, divided into 15 regularity stages and nearly 1,000 kilometers of road sections. The cars have improved, there's no doubt about that. And I think that this is a reflection of the current development of clean mobility. They now have a range of more than 400 kilometers, which allows us to drive relatively long stages. The Monte Carlo E-Rally is a regularity rally, a so-called time, speed, distance rally, with the object of driving each segment of a course in a specified time at a specified average speed. Plus, the energy performance is measured. The winner of the FIA E-Rally Regularity Cup will be the crew who has the lowest amount of penalty points from the regularity secret controls and the time controls. The related classification will be combined with the results of the energy performance index. The grand start is held in Chateauneuf in the Loire region, the first municipal domain in France to be autonomous in green energy, a real symbol to highlight the technological potential of the vehicles entered in the event. The start of the first stage takes place at the foot of the Chateau du Mollard with 188 kilometers on the program. The parade of the different sized zero emission vehicles from a Fiat 500 to a Porsche Taycan and a Mercedes EQA make a good show on the road. In the evening, the teams will be hosted in Valence in a warm and welcoming atmosphere while their cars get ready for the next day. The second day starts bright and early in the morning and consists of a loop starting and finishing in Valence in the Drôme region of France. The very mountainous course with its serpentine roads places high demands on the teams when it comes to maintaining an average speed until the last meter. In the afternoon, they take on stage three, almost 40 kilometers between Tournesol and Mouche passes, both at an altitude of over a thousand meters before a return to Valence concludes the day and opens the perspectives on a fourth stage between the capital of Drôme and Monte Carlo. After three stages, the first three teams are divided by just 10 penalty points. Frédéric Lancio and Nicolas Bojo in their VW ID4 have the same score as Jean-Guillaume Jamin and Stéphane Loro in their Skoda Enyaq. On the next day, it's time to say goodbye to Valence and head south. The day's program includes four regularity stages through the Moor Massif and the Maritime Alps in the Var region for arrival in Monaco in the evening. All in all, approximately 500 kilometers. After crossing 17 French departments from north to south, all cars arrive in Monaco on Friday evening. Obviously, the passage to the port to the headquarters of the Automobile Club de Monaco has already given a little taste of victory to those happy to reach the last city of the rally, even if the event is still far from its final point. And this is one of the novelties of this 2021 edition. No restricted parking at the foot of the rock. Competitors can take advantage of the numerous charging stations. Monaco has both public car parks and outdoor parking spaces reserved for electric cars. The last day starts at Key Reiner III in the heart of Monaco. 360 kilometers lie ahead of the teams. Like all the special stages since the beginning of the event, the layout has been studied to pose difficulties on the crews with breaks in rhythm and differences in terrain that make it tricky to maintain an average speed. After a wonderful day in the south of France, the teams return to Monaco to crown the 2021 champion. Frédéric Lancio and Nicolas Bouhot are the winners of the fifth edition of the Monte Carlo e-Rally. Yeah, we're the winners, and it's a lot of emotions for us. For the moment, I haven't realized it really. We don't realize it at all. We don't believe it yet. Of course, it's a dream come true for us. It's magical. That's it for today and for this year. 
FIA Pure Motorsport will be back in 2022 again with the whole spectrum of the FIA world of motorsport news, action, and info. We hope you enjoyed this season, and we hope you'll join us next season. Till next time, take care, everybody, and ciao.